So should we start, sir? Yes. Yeah. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, this is the initiative of Institute of Innovation Commission. We organized this workshop on IPR awareness. The target audience of this workshop are the students whose final year project or mini project has some innovative component involved in it. So, as per the guidance from Dr. Vikram Patil sir, director of our institute, we are giving more focus on the innovation for the, those students whose project has innovation component so that these students and guides can take this project further to the level of IPR or startup. To know what are the paths towards the IPR and startup, this awareness workshop is planned. Professor Mrs. Bidway ma'am from Electronics Department is a resource person for this workshop. Before we start this workshop, I request Honorable Director Dr. Vikram Patil sir to guide us about the agenda and their thought process about this workshop. Director sir. Good morning everyone. Hope I am audible. Yes sir, you are audible. Yes sir. Yes sir, yes sir. Yes sir, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> looking at the national level government policies as uh, Atmanirvar Bharat and Make in India and all other initiatives by government, it is necessary. <laughs> that our students should be exposed to these things. It has been observed that many students are doing good projects, but then afterward, they don't continue with the project. It happens that maybe the need that they have to earn the livelihood, so they don't think about the project afterward, after graduation, and they join the job and they go uh, the routine channel. Here, we decided that if the project has got some innovative component, at least we'll give some exposure to the students that, okay, you can think of it, not today, but you can <clears throat> in future also after one year or two years. So if project is having innovative component, how that the depth or degree of innovation can be further improved, how that can go for the intellectual property, right? Maybe in terms of the patent or design, so that the your idea, your intellectual efforts, which you put for designing and developing that project will remain with you. And in future, if possible, either you can license it out or you can start your own something using that intellectual property. So doing this, uh, everybody involved into this project guides, students mm -hmm. should yeah. aware about what are these yeah. IP rights, what are these different yeah. IPs. Yeah. Is that possible to mute all? And then go ahead with that. So whether it, we have identified, the departments have identified that your project has got some innovative component. Now that innovative component is how to, as I said earlier, the increase the depth of that innovation or how you can think further innovation about the project or if any similar patent related to this work has been filed, what are the claims in those patent, how to find those claims and how to compare those claims with your objectives of the project. All these things will be discussed. And afterward, again, we'll be discussing about if one want to initiate the startup activity, what are the things to be done? 
so with this objective of course this is the first session for the student and definitely this is not the only session for you people as you are progressing into the project progressing means not only the uh, physical completion of the project but the intellectual contribution from your side we will be conducting more sessions that how we should go ahead in the next step so we'll keep on interacting on continual basis and we'll see how you will get recognition of your intellectual efforts uh, i may speak in between or afterward as and when it is required or as and when i feel i should address you uh, over to uh, khataoka sir for further proceedings okay. thank you sir um, surely we we'll need your guidance and expertise sir to take this project towards the ipr or to start the startup from this particular workshop uh, particular projects so now i request by the way ma'am to please go ahead with uh, their content we are eager to listen to you ma'am thank you sir i hope i am audible yes ma'am you are audible good morning everyone uh, good morning director sir uh, as director sir has briefed about the objectives of this session uh, we will try to uh, you know handhold all the aspirants who are looking for some ip to be filed based on their projects so the core area being focused today will be uh, the projects but prior to that um i feel there should be some kind of uh, introduction uh, required for uh, all the participants towards connecting them to what exactly is ip and what are other types other than patents uh, so i'll just go through the contents so we'll start with what is the concept of ip it might be known to many of the participants but might be new for others so i would be touching this aspect initially then uh, we will cover the, the types of ips in short then we will look at the patents and their procedures till filing and you know grant of the patent and then we will see how exactly the journey from a project to patents can be covered then we'll see even uh, some case studies and at the end of this presentation as the director sir mentioned he would be guiding you how to connect these ips towards entrepreneurship so that can be uh, some kind of uh, startup or ongoing uh, businesses so how to connect that uh, sir will guide you on that so let's start with the ip ip stands for intellectual property so in simple language we can uh, consider any ip like any other property the way we have uh, our properties like uh, your houses vehicles the same way you can treat the intellectual property as well so it is very much similar to one's uh, personal property just the thing is it has emerged from creation of mind so we term it as intellectual property uh the way there are some laws associated with other properties we also have typical laws related to each intellectual property we would be looking at different types of intellectual properties and each one has got their own set of laws and rules so and they keep on amending as and when they are required so usually intellectual property is considered as creation of mind and that creation can be in terms of inventions some literary or artistic works they may be some symbols designs images and that can be used for commercializing so it's not merely a, a hobby the way uh, there are some literary and artistic works <clears throat> being produced as a part of hobby by any individual but when it comes to a commercial world we have to protect them and so we consider them as intellectual property 
uh, a broad classification of IPs include only two categories. One is industrial property and another is copyright. Industrial property specifically is something which can be produced from the industry. So which can be manufactured. And copyright is something which should come in on paper. So in simple words, I'm telling there are no technicalities or uh, techno legal terms in that. So copyright, which comes on paper, can be copyrighted or it can be protected under copyright. And the in intellectual properties which are capable of being manufactured relate to the industrial property. So in industrial property, we have patents typically given for inventions. Then there are trademarks. Trademarks are the symbols and uh, you know notations used for businesses. Then industrial designs and the trade secrets. So they are all closely associated with industry and their manufacturing from industry. And in copyrights, we cover novels, poems, plays, movies, music, artistic works like drawing, painting, photographs. Then there are even rights related to those of performing artists, means the live performances of some actors uh, or even some broadcasted uh, uh, like uh, some matches have been recorded and they will be telecasted later. So they are all protected and copyrights. There is one more separate category which cannot be considered either as industrial property or copyright, but that exists. That is called as a geographical indications. It is related to a typical geographical region and the goods or the services provided typically from that geographical region. So that can be an agricultural product or that can be a manufacturer, manufactured product. So that can be covered typically based on the geographical region and hence it is termed as geographical indications. So this is also one of the types of IPs. In general, uh, there are some uh, categories and accordingly what kind of things we can cover under which category. So it is summarized in this table. So the legal right of patents can be availed for an invention. So the legal right is patent. If we have some kind of invention through our project that can be protected under patents, then how do we go for it? We have to apply and then there is a detailed procedure which we are going to see further but in short I will summarize here. Uh, we have to apply for it or uh, for the patent online or offline and then there will be an examination. Examination reports will be sent. If the examination is qualified in first go then immediately the patent will be granted and the period for protection for patents is 20 years. Then comes copyrights. The copyrights are for literary and artistic works. It um, for filing the copyright, uh, actually we don't even have to go and register. See, there are two things. Once I write something, that becomes mine because that is the creation of my brain. So there exists a natural right which comes automatically to the author. Suppose if I write a poem today on a paper, so that paper is self-sufficient to tell that once I write that, so it is my natural right on it. But if I want to protect, if I want to avoid others from using it without my permission, then I must register it. And it is valid for all kinds of intellectual properties. If I create something today, it becomes my natural right on it. Whether it is some invention in, in the form of a machine or a product, whether it is a literary work or whether it is a design or something like that. The moment I create, the natural right comes in picture. But if I want others, if I want to avoid others from using it, either with my knowledge or without my knowledge. 
So this here comes the protection thing. And for this protection, we have to register. Now it depends on what kind of intellectual property it is. We have to go for the separate procedures. So the procedure for registration of patent is different. The uh, procedure for copyright registration is different. For trademark industrial designs are different. And there is one more thing called as trade secret for which we actually don't go for protection because when we go for protecting anything into the uh, specific office, first we have to disclose it. For example, if I want to file a patent, we keep all secrecy directions and everything till filing and after filing we can publish it anywhere and by any means. But while filing, I have to disclose everything in and around my invention. So once it is disclosed, once it is protected on our name, then it will be available in public. So that public should know that this particular thing is registered on the name of this person. And they should avoid using the same thing without permission. So the basic concept of intellectual property is the moment it is created, it is a natural right of the creator. But if we want to avoid others from using it, we have to legally protect them. And if we legally protect them, then, then only we will have the legal right to file a case against the infringers. Infringer means who is illegally using it. So this is applicable to all the intellectual properties. So we have seen just now uh, the patents. Patents we take on inventions. We'll see later on what are inventions, what are uh, the criteria for uh, some invention to be patentable. Then there is a uh, procedure in patent office to file the application either online or offline, go through the examination and the patent will be granted and the protection for 20 years will be given to patents. In case of copyrights, uh, for literary and artistic work, the, uh, the creations are protected under copyrights and it exists automatically and after registration, similar to the patents procedure, there is a registration procedure for copyrights online as well as offline. And the protection offered for this is lifetime of the author plus 60 years. Actually, there are even some small variations depending on whether it is performing art or um, some uh, typical literary work. There are some variations in the protection period. But on an average, it is lifetime of the author plus or the artist, I can say, plus 60 years. Then comes trademarks, usually the distinctive identification of the products or services. So there are two categories which we can protect under trademarks. One is products or the services. So for uh, identifying the distinct, distinctive identification means different from the crowd. If we want to put our business different from the crowd, we should have some identification attached to it. And that can be done under trademarks. So this can be done for a product or for the service or set of products and set of services or combination of products and services. So a business never lies typically on only producing. They may have their marketing strategies and everything. So they may also provide services along with the products like maintenance of their own product. So uh, any business can protect their distinctiveness for the products and services under trademarks. And in India particularly, uh, we give preference to the use. For example, some businessmen or an industrialist have their product maybe uh, since last 10 years. He must be using some symbol to identify his business but he has not registered yet for the trademark and a similar trademark might be existing since last five years. If both of them apply at the same time, the priority will be given to the person who is using since 10 years. 
though the registration date is same for both but the priority goes to use so i hope this would be clear uh, this protection period is for 10 years then there are industrial designs uh, it is uh, it can be considered as a subcategory under patents itself uh, in other i mean uh, in the routine language we also call it as design patent it is similar but different in some small aspects that's why it has been categorized separately so industrial designs are uh, the protection given for the ornamental shape or the aesthetic look or the appearance of a product so it has nothing to do with the procedure or function of a product industrial designs are typically given as a protection for the appearance how it looks that's it it has nothing to do with the procedure usually normal patents include the mechanism functioning appearance and everything but industrial designs typically relate to the shape or the ornamental structure or in general the appearance of anything so these industrial designs uh, they also have a separate way of registration and the protection given for them starts from 5 years maximum extendable up to 15 years then comes the trade secret trade secret is something which we never go and register anywhere because as i told you if we go and register we have to disclose and secrets are never meant for disclosing and that to for a public open trade secrets are something which are very valuable information and they are not supposed to be publicized uh, for example some recipes usually recipes are not protected under any category usually and say there are some exceptional cases so you won't find any recipe being registered under any kind of intellectual property the reason being if they disclose the recipe there is no value to the product so that's why uh, there is no any reasonable efforts can be done or there is no any authentic procedure available for registering a trade secret they are kept secrets now you might think why it has come in this sequence then see intellectual properties or any other property the purpose of your property is in commercial terms and when it comes to the trade secret it is closely related to that and hence it has come in this category uh, all the intellectual properties till its regist registration we keep secret this is a general thumb rule this is not a law this is a general thumb rule so before it comes on my name i should not disclose it i mean it is very natural to say this so there is no limit there is no registration procedure for trade secrets but they are the actual intellectual properties and they can be uh, kept secret so this is at one glance i try to show you what are the types of patents and how much Uh, period will be given for their protections but our, as i told our main focus is on patents and that to how to go from projects to patents so let us see patents in detail what exactly is a patent it's an exclusive right granted for an invention now invention uh, can be anything it can be in any field and it can be done by anyone so it it is not always required that inventions are done only by the scientists or some r&d people working in some r&d wing of an industry invention can be even done by a literate person but still it has i mean he has the right of that intellectual property now invention can be anything but not all inventions are patentable invention can be anything but not all inventions are patentable there are uh, some rules and acts uh, 
in patents act 1970 uh, a separate section is dedicated on what inventions are non patentable so i won't go in details of the act and all but just for the information i can tell you that the inventions related to some atomic energy means which is hazardous to human life or living beings so such inventions though they are inventions but we don't patent them so it is worldwide accepted truth that whatever invention is there but if it is hazardous to the living beings cannot be patented so you should make it very clear that your invention should come under or should fall within the limits of patentability so there are three aspects of patentability the invention has to be though it is an invention it has to be novel novel means which was never existed earlier <coughs> this is <coughs> sorry this is first point second point is it should include inventive step inventive step means it should not be the invention should not be simply an admixture of two procedures or two products which earlier present which were present earlier and now you are simply joining them or merging them combining them in some means and creating something new and now you are calling it as a novel so this thing is non patentable first was novelty second is non obviousness or it should include um what we say inventive step uh and third is it should be industrially applicable means it should have the capacity to be produced from the industry so these are the three criteria if your project if any invention falls in all the three categories then only it qualifies to be a patentable thing i hope it is understood now in this a patent can be a product or it can be a process if it is a product then it will go under product patent category otherwise it will go in process so i uh, studied the um, uh, topics collected from our college certainly we had collected uh, the topics and i wish to talk on that typically based on which topic can go for a product patent and which can go for a process patent so i hope this will be useful for the students particularly so i mean to say the patents can be either a product patent or a process patent uh which provides a new way of doing something or it offers a new technical solution to a problem see these are the definitions taken from uh legal and authentic documents so every word has got some meaning behind it patent can be a product or a process that provides a new way of doing something if it is a process it will be a series of steps some kind of algorithm will be attached to it that can also be protected under patents uh whether it is a product or a process but that should lead to a technical solution to an existing problem again uh, these things are enough to ponder upon then there, there are some categories of patents a patent can be an electronic system a mechanical machine a software product or combination of all these three when it comes to the product when it comes to a project we cannot isolate one technology from other if we are solely involved in providing a solution it will it may contain some part of electronic system there will be some mechanism attached to it there will be some software which would be driving all the electromechanical systems so that can be combination of anything and there is one more type of patent which is medicines in india we have uh, dr batra's lab so uh, they are the highest manufacturers uh, sorry the uh, 
they are not only the highest manufacturers of drugs but also the highest patent holding company in india dr batra uh, sorry dr reddy's lab it is so all the ips which they own the count of the ips is highest among all industries in india so irrespective of uh, any other software or you know forging or any other industries compared to them they are holding highest number of patents then there are design patents so the one which i mentioned just one slide earlier uh, design patents are also called as industrial designs in technical terms so the legal protection of unique visual qualities of a manufactured atom are coming into this category see only the ornamental structure only how it appears a manufactured product how it looks for the specifications of that ornamental look we take protection under industrial design then as i mentioned there are process patent so if i am going for a patent registration for my project i can go under any one of the categories these are not hard and fast categories these are some general classifications under which protection can be taken this is a uh, it flow normally a patent registration process starts with a prior art search which is not shown in this flow chart prior art search tells us whether the invention which you are calling as invention exists earlier or not so that comes as a uh, we can say a pre step before registration prior art search means uh, even for uh, your projects you keep on doing the literature survey we as an academician do a literature survey and try to find the evidences in terms of some kind of literature it can be a published paper or um, any conference paper or journal paper or some news or some white papers or of industries and so on so we typically focus on literature but when it comes to a patent it has to get uh, you know identified or search in patented as well as non patent literature and that is called as prior art search so once we search then we get an idea that yes my innovation is patented so it has not existed earlier so the prior art search gives you an idea of novelty novelty means it was not existing earlier in and how do we find it we have to find the uh, internet journals and even the patent literature more specifically so once it is finalized that it is innovative then we can go ahead for filing in patent office uh, it is encouraged by the government that any individual who is the inventor of some invention should be able to individually go and file so you don't need i mean it is an encouragement given by all the facilities provided by the government that any individual can go visit the um, ip india website there are many documentations to be read by the inventor and he should follow the procedure as mentioned in those documentation see it is freely available there so one has to first check whether your invention is patentable if it is finalized that it is patentable then go for filing then there are two ways for filing either online or offline we have to uh, reach to the nearest patent office for us it is uh, in mumbai and we have to go there if physically you wish to you know file the patent otherwise uh, online filing is encouraged first we have to uh, prepare a draft and file it once it is filed then it will be published within 18 months after publishing why it is published so that public should know that somebody with this name with this invention 
has filed a patent. So there are many people who will have a keen eye on what is being published so that others will come to know that this is being attached to somebody else's name. If there is a person who has already invented something but did not file under any IP, then he can, I mean, it is a facility given to the public to check whether someone is filing a patent illegally. So for that, this is a procedure. There can be a pre-grant opposition when the patent is published. After that, public will have right. Public, I mean to say anyone. They are not necessary to be uh, a learned person or anything. Anyone who feels like this patent is mine, but somebody else is filing. They have the right to file a pre-grant opposition to the patent office. Then some procedures and hearing will be happening like it happens in the court and then decisions will be taken. If the decision comes to be granting, it will, you can follow this uh, arrow. If the decision comes to patent grant, then it will straightway grant it. If the opponent is strong enough to prove that the inventor who is filing the patent is illegally doing it and that right already exists prior to his filing, then the patent application will be refused. Suppose if there is no any pre-grant opposition, then after filing the patent will be published, then there will be request for examination. I mean the inventor has to uh, write an application through the formatted applications available on the IP India website. So uh, we have to file a request for examination. Then in reply to that from the patent office, an examination report, FER we call it as, first examination report will be issued. If there are some compliances to be fulfilled, compliances means the patent office will tell that your these contents are not clear, kindly explain it in more detail. Uh, or if they find similar things related to your filed application, they will say like uh, there is some other patent, they will cite some patent and they will tell you that yes, this file, uh, this uh, patent looks very much similar to yours, kindly justify how yours is different. So some uh, something like this will be published uh, in the first examination report and that report will If that response is not sufficient, then some further examination reports and hearing will be uh, you know, happening. Suppose uh, the in FER, first examination report, the examiner tells you to produce some valid proof of your experimentation. And if we fail to produce them, then they may call us either for the hearing or they will ask us once again to clarify their doubts. So even after this, we fail to uh, supply them, provide them the requisite documents, then the patent will be refused. If we qualify the exam, then the patent will be granted and that grant notification will be given to us through a certificate. Even after granting, there can be some post-grant oppositions. There may be some people who might not have seen when the, uh, the, the patent application was initially published, but they find it after granting in the website. Then still there can be a post-grant opposition. For this post-grant opposition also, there are two decisions as a result. The patent even after grant can be refused or still granted for further use. So this is a normal uh, procedure which a patent office follows. I hope there are um, 
no more doubts or if there are any please note it down at the end of the session we will entertain all the queries once the patent is granted you will be issued with some kind of i mean this this type of a certificate which tells you that what is your patent application number and from whom it is granted you can see the signature of the controller of patents so a certificate will be granted and from the date of filing see this was the first step we did while the registration of a process the date of filing will be considered as the initial date and from then you can avail the rights of this patent up to 20 years it is not from the grant but it is from um i have given some categories of patents so here are some examples medicines so we uh, need not to really look into what medicine has got what patent but as i told you not only in india but even worldwide the maximum number of patents are granted in the field of pharmacy pharmacy because every uh, chemical reaction can produce different results and every combination of chemicals can give you a different outcome accordingly there are many i mean maximum number of patents in this category so medicines is one electronic systems so even if you can see a mobile phone as an electronic system but there is a typical shape of uh, the outer case there is a typical uh, size and you know format of keys uh, embedded on the surface so there are multiple patents attached to a mobile phone so the typical picture which i am displaying right now can have multiple patents one of the category in which there can be patents is related to the appearance the ornamental shape of it the mobiles which nowadays we use are all smartphones they don't have this flap so the flap and this kind of structure can be one category uh the shape of screen the shape and sizes of the keyboard uh and even you can see the on off buttons and this arrangement of some particular keys just above the keypad i mean the number pad so that can be another uh, kind of patent in the design category itself there are uh, hundreds of electronic components uh, embedded in it so they will have again all together a different category of patents uh the material which is used the mechanism of this flap can go in a normal patent because this hinge and uh, the kind of shape they are provided typically for uh, a mobile phone is a different thing then uh, mechanical system so this is uh, just a uh, grinding machine for grains um a typical mechanical structure uh, with some mechanism inside it is uh, another example of a patent then uh, typically for um, computers i mean uh, csc students i would like to uh, show this um, particular example of unisys the gifs which we use normally in our day to day life every day it seems uh the gif is a kind of patent on the name of unisys unisys is the company who uh, created it so though it is a gif or kind of software we can say for a layman language uh but just because it is a product and it is being commercialized in the industry so it can come under patents otherwise a normal code or source code of any software comes under uh, the protection of copyrights because it is a literary work because a code can be printed because a code can be written so a program or the source code of any software actually is uh, coming under the category of copyrights but just because it becomes a product it can come in the commercial product category so they can be patented so the gifs is one of them 
the design patents so design patent being a special branch of patents um, we have collected some specific examples uh, if you remember design patents are uh, related specific to the ornamental shape or the design here you can see uh, a thumbs up bottle its side view and top view so the design patent is granted for this particular structure then there are branded goggles there is one uh, design patent even on the bangle and that was granted in 1988 so this is also a patented thing so the one who is who might be wearing this must be proud of it that i am wearing a patented thing uh, there is even a patent related to uh, the shapes of vehicles you can see the car with roof and without roof here so uh, though a vehicle also is a combination of multiple patents but design patents are specifically taken for the protection of shapes you also see there are uh, more than you know thousands of shapes for the same brand for the same car then there are very interestingly some cartoon characters they are also patented under design patent so the mickey mouse or um, this i don't remember the name of this character cartoon character so these are the um, characters which are patented by disneyland there are some fees for patent filing uh, now the reason behind connecting patents to entrepreneurship like you can see the fees for a natural person or individual inventor by the government office for application is 1600 okay so uh, there is a provision that one uh, a one person company or a startup also has got the same fees but when it goes to little bit higher category of small entity means uh, the smes and msmes and even a larger company so for that company instead of 1600 you may have to pay 4000 to 8000 if it is a larger company the fees is 8000 if it is a uh, small scale industry the fees will be 4000 no you can think for your long term fees if you file a patent being a student or if you file a patent being an entrepreneur of a startup or a one person company so the fees will be 1600 then uh, there are some uh, fees like early publication fees request for examination so these are the procedures which were involved in that flow chart which i had shown and for every step we have to pay some amount of fees um, till its grant so i don't go in details of it and one more important thing which i would like to mention is these fees are subject to change they don't uh, remain same for years after years so they also change you have to keep yourself updated related to the fees only on the authentic website of ip india now here lies our goal how to move from a project to a patent uh in the definition of patent we have seen the invention has to be a solution to an existing problem if the definition itself tells us that it should be a solution then first we have to find out a proper problem statement now from the domain of ip we are coming to projects the academic projects uh usually it is a trend of students among students typically i am saying they are discuss with their seniors and finalize the project titles the ways and ventures i don't need to mention but the ideal way of going for it is choosing a correct problem statement now see nowadays we have hundreds of 
problem statements just lying there on the websites of any hackathon like smart india hackathon and all there are many competition based hirings where they expect like uh, your kpit sparkle so then they publish they collect they publish all the real time problems to be solved and they even help you to find a patterns on it if you are able to provide a proper solution so all the story revolves around a proper problem and its solution so the first step if you wish to go for patenting your project is to check whether your project qualifies a problem solution thing means are you providing a solution to some existing and unsolved problem second you need to investigate the prior art prior art means you have to rigorously go through internet surf it and check whether any such capable solution right now exists or not so any solution if it is existing then you are not supposed to go for a similar one means you have to modify your design your solution so that you should be able to prove your invention patentable i hope i am making sense I request that you please switch off your mic. Please mute yourself. <coughs> Shikhan Tolkar, somebody with this name. Thank you. So we were at prior art investigation. suppose i have chosen a problem i also think of the solution but i need to check whether similar solution is existing or not if it is existing please study its features and the features which they did not involve or try to find out the disadvantages of existing solution and try to address them then your invention or your project can become patented then comes the documentation everyone should have the actual lab readings or some experimentation results maybe in terms of photographs or readings taken down on paper or maybe some excel sheets are maintained for huge databases collected um, and you should have all the reports written in a proper form reports means uh, the observations maybe some conclusions you might have drawn out of the experimentation results so they um, have a crucial role in drafting a patent application so not only validating your uh, invention to be patentable is not merely sufficient you should have sufficient proof of your own invention that it is yours so how it can be proved or somebody if ask uh, if the examiner asks you to provide some exhaustive data to be proven as your invention is capable of being patented for that purpose all these things the record keeping of all the readings results reports is very essential now one semester is over the students might have uh, started getting some results so please have a proper record of it let it be any branch but somewhere or in some way or other way you need to keep all the things then the topmost priority is the secrecy you are not at all allowed to publish any paper if you wish to file a patent on your project you are not supposed to present it in any competitions because you have seen in the flowchart there are people 
who are looking at what thing has been filed for patenting and they are ready to prove people means not your friends or somebody if there is some commercial aspect involved in your project if it is going to fetch huge amount of money after being manufactured then even companies would be interested in such concepts and if they are you know uh, if they can prove like you have already published before uh, patenting then you will lose the protection so secrecy is the top priority thing that you have to maintain till you file once you file then it is done now see uh, you have got an advantage from the patents act itself that once you click an idea idea means solution to a problem once it clicks you can uh, if you are able to write it on paper with some nominal figures and with some amount of description then you can go for provisional specification filing there are two ways in which you can file a patent application one is a provisional specification another is complete specification if you don't have enough results enough readings and supporting documents to prove that your invention is complete then you can go for provisional application the same form 2 there is a particular form named as form 2 available there online that you have to fill for filing a patent application in the same form you can choose to file a provisional specification provisional will not ask you the claims provisional will not uh, you know compel you to write a complete description of your invention but that is sufficient to protect your idea an idea can be materialized can be tested later on but can be filed earlier with some nominal description and if some block diagram or some you know some kind of figures can be attached if they are available then that is sufficient for a patent filing once you file a provisional specification after the date of that filing you will get 12 more months to make your idea mature enough to write a complete specification and even to write claims now the people who are absolutely unaware of the patent i would like to tell for them that a patent contains uh, two important things in its you know uh, in its format one is the description and another is claims if you include claims that becomes your complete specification if you exclude claims that becomes your provisional specification claims is something which typically tells you what are the specific aspects which are novel which are different from others and based on which you claim the protection for your invention they are called as claims so once you have all the uh, supporting documents ready supporting documents means lab results and you know similar things reports and all then you can write what specific aspect of the invention you wish to protect so that aspect is important in case of complete specification now coming back as i told that there are two ways in which you can file a patent application one is provisional and the other is complete specification if your project is not completed yet but you feel that it is sufficient to file an idea if you have sufficient amount of information collected and to be reproduced as a document then you can go for provisional filing then you will have to uh, pay that 1600 fees online and file your uh, idea and then work on it for you know 12 months and before completion of 12 months obviously you have to go for 
second filing of the same patent and that second filing is called as complete specification filing so that you can do so this is uh, as i said it is an advantage for the students who are still working on their projects and it is the right time to think over it it is the right time to think for a provisional specification filing for that also you need some drafting skills drafting means technical writing uh many students might be facing problems in writing in correct english or you know kind of techno legal language in uh, writing the patent application so for that there are many tools available online even if you simply uh, search it on google uh, there are many tools software tools available to support or you know to give you corrections for what you write maybe in terms of you know tenses and uh, other language uh, replacements of specific words so there are many tools uh, try to have somebody with uh, good lexical skills in english in your project group so that can be one of my suggestions see if it is possible or even your guides are there to support you no doubt but we need uh, somebody to even write it so these are some requirements to go for uh, a patent if you have a project first validate whether it fits in the format of problem solution kind of approach if it is not please do that if yes then go for prior art investigation i am not asking for search i am suggesting an investigation because if you find a similar patent already Uh, file somewhere in the corner of the world then you have to really go into the claims and the detailed description and find out what are their lacunas what are their drawbacks what they left out and pick those even if you are capable of picking one or two aspects of those patterns and if you are addressing solution in your application there are maximum chances that your patent can be granted equally but for that not merely a search but investigation is important then you need to keep record of everything everything in terms of photographs in terms of you know excel sheets some reports readings conclusions in a proper format everything documented properly and secrecy as i told then as you have all the material you should be able to write it properly so these are the requirements there are few more things which you can use as a validation criteria uh typically for uh, drafting now see you need to check whether the relevant information about the invention in the field of invention is existing means you have to do a prior art search it's investigation and you should be able to write it on paper that others though they have a similar invention but they have these many drawbacks you may find such three to four patents for example you are investigating whether your project is patentable or not and while searching the prior art you find that there are three patents similar to your project maybe few years back they are filed and granted and if you are able to find out what are their drawbacks for prior art 1 there may be some for prior art 2 there will be few more for prior art 3 there will be few more so you should be in a position to write their drawbacks and even you should be able to prove that how your solution is overcoming those drawbacks so this is the second stage so problems of the prior art you should be able to identify and write it on paper so practically literally you have to write it on paper then some problem definitions for your own solution you should be in a position to write a problem definition or some kind of objective then the complete description should be there before filing you should have all these things ready with you uh the complete description you should be able to write complete description for a mechanical system may include 
the structure, the connections, shape, size, mechanism, everything, including the function of your machine or the solution. Not always it can be a machine, but it can be a mechanism also. So for mechanical people, I can suggest this. The complete description must include some drawings, diagrams, the connections, the feet, uh, I mean, uh, the structural features should be involved. Uh, the complete description for circuit branches can be related to the circuit diagrams. They are working in terms of uh, from where the voltages and currents are flowing, from where to where they are going, how it is being processed by the processors and controllers. So these all things will be included in the complete description. And for the softwares, uh, it should be the description of uh, description in terms of some algorithm or flowchart. Uh, then uh, you should be in a position to write advantages of your invention. If you know the drawbacks of earlier people, then only you can write the advantages of your invention. So that is another important point. Uh, again, uh, if you have worked upon your project quite well, if it is complete and in working condition, then you can also add the operational examples of the invention. If you are using it, if you are using it in some firm or with in association with other machines or something else, then you can quote those examples in while drafting. They can be used or they can be of help for granting the patent. So as a summary of uh, the requirements uh, from the project, point of view. Uh, the thinking pattern should be problem solution based. With all secrecy, you will have to keep documentations ready. And once everything is ready, then you should be able to write something under all these headings. Suppose I, if I give these headings uh, and you have your invention ready with you, so uh, the students are expected to write something under each heading and if you are not able to write it means your search either search or your work is still not completed so that can be one checkpoint so these points can be um, taken for reference by the students now let us come to uh, the topics which we have collected uh, i have gone through them and uh, try to categorize them as circuit branch projects and non-circuit branch project projects. Uh, mostly, uh, uh, unfortunately, I could not find uh, any submissions from CSE because I had some inputs to them also, but I could not find any titles from them. So I may be addressing um, maybe in later stages of this workshop. Uh, first is the low cost cold storage using thermocore. Uh, then there is alternator modification. I think uh, first few are from automobile, then aeronautical, then mechanical. Uh, and uh, that way they will go on. So for the topics which I am displaying right now, I hope the students related to them are present here. Uh, please make sure that your problem solution based approach is fulfilled. If not, please give some time for that. If you are really interested to you know, file a patent, the guides and students should sit together, work on it and literally write it on paper. Everything, whatever you have and what you don't have. If you don't have something, please work on that. You will have vacations very soon. So in those holidays, please work on that. Uh, one uh, title I found which can be uh, you know, considered for a process patent, innovative model for a traditional uh, sanitation technology, a case study of, uh, uh, I mean, they have taken some uh, place as a case study. So though it is a case and though it is mentioned just for the sake of giving name to the project, but you can uh, 
file a patent on the process that innovative process because when you are talking about a model there must be a series or you know sequence of steps which can lead you to a process patent because that particular uh, model can give you outcomes so there you can find out or calculate you know uh, the efficiency you know the accuracy of your method which leads to a different you know all together different uh, results so as that process is giving you some extraordinary results that process becomes innovative and that can be uh, coming under the process patent so remaining all the earlier topics can go for either a design patent or a normal patent now the titles with design 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 i mean design and manufacturing when you are saying it will go to a patent when it is a design of a roller shaft assembly so this can be considered for a design patent because you will be having all the uh, you know uh, the aesthetic aspects the ornamental aspects of that shaft assembly so how that uh, that assembly can lead to some um, extraordinary result if you are able to prove that this particular design can be filed as an industrial design but others where the mechanism is also involved like the design and manufacturing of lower body exoskeleton so it is not only the design but also mechanism attached to it the exoskeleton is a kind of you know movable part the robotic arms like structures will be there so not only the structure not only the aesthetic looks but the mechanism is involved so you can go for a patent then there are some uh, smart moving driver for uh, heavy traffic flow management that this can go for a process patent a self uh, reclosing explosion now see uh, the things which i listed earlier based on that you can categorize your project in either process patent or product patent and accordingly you start looking at it from now itself so when you look at that as some particular category accordingly your specifications will be different accordingly you will be able to write the claims then uh microcontroller based ultrasonic stirrer so this is um, one i mean uh, circuit branch based uh, innovation i can say uh, it is actually a portable composter then there is a smart helmet so we have from our department these two portable composter and smart helmet two concepts uh, one thing as i observed uh, many cases uh, while filing many patent applications that these days people are leaning towards making the things smarter and getting a protection on it there can be a mechanical system which you might be using manually if you automate it you will get a patent i mean though the earlier mechanism manual mechanism is already patented but just because you are making it automated now there is no any human intervention in it then that can go in a different category and that can be patented uh, if your machine is automated but you are making it smarter smarter means nowadays iot is being merged in each and every field internet of things i am talking about if you connect that iot in any mechanical system electromechanical system or even automated system so these are things are related to mechanical electrical automobile as well as aeronautical so whatever structures you have if you are capable of making it smart just by inserting some sensors taking the real time data of those sensors putting it on cloud and then giving access to some uh, mobile application will make it patentable so though the existing uh, hardware existing machines are already patented but still 
if you are capable of making them smart then there can be another category in which the same thing with smart additions will be patented so this is my observation these days whatever cases i am dealing with are uh, almost related to making the existing smarter and getting its protection so this can be one view an innovative view of looking at projects so these are the things which i thought to talk about uh, our own projects which can be further made uh, patented now you might think why to invest some money to file why we should you know uh, go for patenting only it is my be project and it is enough for me to just complete it get the marks and go ahead so you are not even required to um, take efforts towards patenting your projects it is not compulsory also but there are few things there are some lucrative you know opportunities which may make you tempted towards filing your projects and then some or other category of intellectual property what are those suppose you followed all the procedures you did um, completed all the examination and a patent is granted maybe suppose before you pass out at least you will have a patent filing certificate in your hand and uh, you are no more interested in doing a job but you are interested in creating jobs then what are the avenues in what way you can utilize your ip now i am not only talking about the patent but i am including all other ips which i mentioned earlier what you can do with your ip you can outrightly sell it say yes you can sell your car you can sell your vehicle you can sell your land or home exactly in the same way you can sell your intellectual property but you need to find an appropriate buyer for it uh, in recent um, few months uh, in foreign countries there is uh, there are auctions happening related to the ips people are calling the organizers of these auctions are inviting inventors and Uh, the buyers they are gathering them all and there are literally auctions are happening for ip ips are being sold at whatever cost they claim the inventor claims so though you don't have the capacity to manufacture your product by your own though you don't have interest of being an entrepreneur but just because you worked really well in your projects and you have one ip in your hand why don't you think of selling it you can so you don't need to always find an option for it but yes you can think of selling it this is one option another option is if you don't want to sell you want to keep the rights of your patent with you but right now you want money to be generated out of that ip then give it for licensing maybe on the contract basis of 5 years or 10 years because you know that ip will be with you for 20 years you can decide for 2 years or the for the period of 5 years how much you want as a remuneration against giving your ip on licensing or even as a franchisee so that is another option capital raising see these are the two tools using which you can raise your capital if you are thinking of becoming an entrepreneur you can have multiple ips and you can showcase that as security for credit you can use it as a spv for mortgage in banks for you know applying for the loans or you can invite other big players in the same field of invention for a joint venture or for a collaboration think why anybody would think of a collaboration if a big company wants to collaborate with a small company there must be some motive behind it 
or the small company must be having something valuable because of which other big company wishes to join hands with them so if your ip is such valuable then naturally there are industries looking for such small opportunities to either buy it or take it on licensing or just collaborate with you now see after completion of project or after completion of this or after filing this ip once you have the right of that ip you can do anything with that and that anything includes these many options now it is up to you what you want to avail uh based on the recent studies of the market ips are gaining huge value as they are gaining value there are different sectors in the industry emerging for example i just wanted to quote one example of hdfc ergo they have uh, got a segment of commercial insurance typically for protecting intellectual property you might have heard about health insurance or your any property insurance uh, or even life insurance similar way there is a segment being opened which looks for intellectual property insurance they will look for the people who wish to infringe your property and if they find something they will be responsible means the insurance company will be responsible for giving you the benefits of the kind of you know reimbursement of the loss which you might have uh, got because of the illegal use of your ip by somewhere else so that insurance company will work for you and you will pay naturally the way we deal um any other insurance company for any other insurances the same way this will also work so hdfc ergo recently started with ip uh, protection in that sense now we can see as the value of ip is is increasing such many sectors would be uh, you know being established even you can think of the value now what project you are looking if you really uh work in that direction you have lots of opportunities to uh, get commercial benefits from that there are some success stories which i wish to just go through uh there are some case studies one is a green soul it is a startup uh this startup is uh, founded by uh, students like you uh, based on the reuse of footwear and typically they found a solution to a problem of uh, the marathon runners who just throw their shoes after a little use even if they are not you know teared their shoes but still just because the sole becomes smooth they cannot run or they cannot use the same shoes in uh, specifically marathon like competitions so throwing them is a complete waste waste of money and waste of even resource as well where uh, at one side we have uh, a population who don't have even a simple footwear to have and at other side if the players are throwing their shoes even if they are not tore or you know they are not uh, very much bad in quality so they can be reused so this startup see this uh, example typically i am quoting because this is a simple startup they thought of reducing the garbage of such shoes which can be reused and they started preparing slippers out of them there is a small photograph here that you can see and this green soul is now becoming a partner i mean they are utilizing the csr funds from big players in the footwear industry so you can see their slippers along with nike shoes woodline shoes and all such brands of footwear so typically i am giving you this example just to encourage you that uh, an idea can change your life they have thought of an idea and now they are earning a lot of it 
and not only earning they have even started uh, donating such footwear to uh, needy people like school going children so this is one aspect uh, there is one more case just to inspire you even in gaming there can be innovation in gaming there is uh, a, a kid you know he is a handicap uh, little child who invented a chess that can be played by four people at once so a chess board and its structure you can see that in the photograph and he has the patent on his knee he is from jaipur you can google if you wish to search a little bit more about him uh one more case study just how the problem solution based approach helps you in uh, having an it on your name uh, she is a girl ankita uh, when she was in uh, uh, her 9th standard she was awarded with some award for being uh, a patent holder person school going children a child with a patent in hand so what solution she provided is uh, actually her father uh, had a xerox machine and they used to you know xerox pages and staple the bunches and give it to the customers and she used to help her father in in that small shop kind of thing uh, but she used to face a problem every time when this tabular pins used to be over because uh, we come to know only when they are over when you don't find a pin even after stapling many times then you come to know that the cartridge is finished and you need to replace it she also used to face a problem maximum time because her work was to help his uh, her father just in stapling so what solution she found of she thought of a solution by painting some uh, last 10 pins in the cartridge with some red nail polish what she did initially was this she painted 10 pins at the end you might have heard his story uh, her story as well earlier because it was uh, from uh, 2011 so, uh, 10 years ago it has been done so you might have even heard but might be new for those who are listening for the first time uh when we keep on stapling if the red color pin comes i can identify now only few pins are remaining and i need to keep uh, another cartridge ready to be filled so this was a mechanism which was you know mind blowing and there was uh, a patent filed on her name and it was even granted so a very simple idea very simple solution as well just painting some pins was the invention but you can see how much uh, help that patent could give to the people who are using staplers very often so these are some cases uh, which i felt could be inspiring and could trigger you for thinking little bit out of the boundaries and it might help you so now i wish to have uh, 10 15 minutes to spare on question answers if you have any uh, you can unmute yourself and you can ask if you have any doubts session is open for the discussion i appeal all the students and the faculty members they can ask any doubt related to the ip to the ma'am yeah i think we should have more deliberations on this more discussion on this then only uh, people will understand that how they can go ahead so uh, whatever doubt you have you may feel that it is not a doubt it is very simple thing but still if it is there that doubt is in your mind you can ask it here
guides can as a student or initiate the discussion so that student will take participate Thirty minutes uh, remaining from our session. So, uh, if you have a doubt, you can uh, ask to ma'am. As well as we have an the addresser who has also very good knowledge about this IP and the company formation and all these things. You can ask. So, uh, I request uh, honourable director, sir. Sir, you just uh, give your thoughts, your share your ideas from your side. Uh, related to the IP and yeah. formation of companies, so that we can hear you for at least thirty minutes. It's an privilege. Yeah, definitely us. that. Definitely that can be done. But what I was expecting is now uh, we have Madam has explained that how a general a pet project can be converted into a patent. Yes. She has explained with few examples with the project titles. Also. So I was expecting. few things from uh, students who are working on these projects so uh, they should come up and uh, open up so that they will get clear idea about it and the basic motto or objective of this kind of a session will be get fulfilled of course i can say here that this is not this uh, earlier said that this is not the only session we will be having further sessions also but uh, it has to be a participative kind of a thing so i appeal to students again that if you have any doubt you go ahead with your questions don't think that how uh, simple your doubt is or how complicated your doubt is and all that you just open up and ask the question about your project which we are expecting that you should go for patenting for the project hello yeah rushik yes, kumar yes sir ha go ahead uh, i am from automobile department uh, sir uh, literally i am working on my project that is a smart hybrid vehicle Okay. So I am converting a uh, Maruti 800 into a hybrid car. Okay. On petrol as well as in electricity. Uh, so basically, I have made make so many changes. Actually, uh, we have electric car and we have uh, petrol car. We don't have hybrid car. Uh, government is uh, Tata companies and all extra are providing electric car only. But for a long drive, actually we have to go for a thousand kilometer. So there is no solution for electric car. We can go up to at least uh, maximum five hundred kilometer. <coughs> so I am working on that. That electric car go there one thousand kilometer up to date. So can I make payment for it? Okay. Yes, Ali, madam. Would you like to <coughs> answer this? Video, uh, madam. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Uh, Rishi, <clears throat> I mentioned yes, two aspects. Like first, you have to search for existing things. See, Tesla is been making uh, electric cars since longer. It it had been the first one to come in market with that solution. You can check with yes, yes. existing patents. See, they might not launch the car, hybrid car. I'm talking about specifically, but there they might have. protected their idea so you need to check in first the patented uh, things so there are ways uh, how to search on it um, we may have even further sessions uh, linked with this today's workshop uh, where we can teach you how to search because that is also an art uh, to find a specific thing you need to uh, search uh, with by following a typical uh, procedure so it has got some things but even google patents to go for a first uh, glance of patents filed in this particular field if you are talking about hybrid vehicle there can be many aspects to it you might have done many changes related to engine you might have done uh, changes maybe in some structure and you know fitting of uh, the yes, yes. 
both the things i mean electrical parts and engine as well so yes, sir. there can be multiple patents involved in so when you are going to search please make sure that you choose a specific category for each invention okay you first okay, okay. search you will come to know yes. whether somebody else has done it earlier or not and once it is you know confirmed that nobody has done it then we can go for it and then done it. okay 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 yeah what <clears throat> i would like to add into it is <clears throat> there are certain variants into the uh, irtiga model they call it as a hybrid you just go check the specifications of that also yes yes uh, sir i have check all the specification actually i am working in uh, various showrooms and all internship okay. so i have gone through all the models of irtiga that is smart hybrid vehicle shvs system so okay. actually it is just a simple way that is no, it is not fully hybrid It okay. is just uh, the engine is running for a while uh, on a motor and it then do petrol. So it okay. is not fully hybrid. It is we can call it semi hybrid. Yeah, yeah. But what, in my condition, right. yes. That's what Adam uh, said is uh, definitely. Then there will be some patent. Now you check your specifications with these uh, patent claims that. you will be having saying specification that okay your car will run on battery for around 300 or 400 kilometers right something like that not exactly yes, what yes. you will design yes, yes. whereas uh, with one charge this currently available maruti hybrid irtiga will be running with uh, 50 kilometers or 100 kilometers the time on run on battery and Uh, time run on conventional fuel will be different in your case will be different in this case so yes, how yes. will we yes. change it to that what is that change you have made so that this is running more on uh, battery and less on the conventional fuel those aspects can be checked yes, you and your guide who is your guide uh, shushan patel uh, yeah your studio of yeah and you can go through different uh, patent search sites like patent.google.com and wipo.org from these sites you can download these patents check these patents which are already patented with your objectives what you want to do and find out where is the gap and then definitely if there is a sizable gap definitely we can go ahead with patenting Okay. Sir. Yeah. Yes. Anybody else? Thank you. Sir. Next question. Anyone else? Otherwise, everybody has got clear idea about their projects, how they will be. going ahead with patenting and all that okay yeah coming back now suppose if you are uh, working and decided that you will be developing your uh, patent as a your product so what is requirement for that is you should have one kind of a entity the classification of that entity is entity in generally it can be classified as some people register it as a proprietary kind of a business uh, you have to do the registration of your activity as a proprietary some people will do it as a, a private uh, or rather partnership registered partnership it can be a private limited company or it can be private limited company with limited liabilities there is one more category added by the government from 2016 that is a opc one person company see a private limited private limited with limited liabilities and registered partnership firm needs more people at least two or more people if you feel that you don't want a partner you want to try it on yourself and come up with the product yourself but then these requirements for these companies is you should have minimum two people 
so government has come up with a new kind of a entity which is called as a opc it is a one person company it has this entity is as good registered as a, a private limited company or private limited limited liability company but there will be a single person owner of this or promoter of this no need of multiple people for any kind of a uh, activity as a entrepreneur if you want to go ahead the proprietary registration is not acceptable for any kind of a government uh, activities especially when you are doing this definitely you will go ahead with subsidies and loans so that time this proprietary kind of a registration is not acceptable so uh, don't register yourself with proprietary kind of a registration if it is a proprietary entity you will find difficulty in getting the subsidy and loans from the government there are these days there are n number of uh, funding schemes are available under the msme category msme is micro small and medium enterprises it depends on how much is your turnover and all that so you have to uh, incorporation of your entity that is incorporate it as a opc or a private company or private li limited with limited liability company and then this incorporated entity you need to register with msme office once that registration is done then it becomes very easy for you people to get the loans and subsidies so you have to think on these lines also of course there are many things can be talked on this based on your individual requirements whether you should go ahead with opc or you should go ahead with private limited or you should go ahead with private limited limited liabilities likewise things can be discussed basically depends on what you want to do so as uh, so far what we have discussed is uh, what kind of requirements are there for patenting whether your project will qualify for that that is uh, innovative steps and uh, novel uh, novelty in inventive steps and the uh, industrial application you just identify whether your project if it is to be converted as a product whether it satisfies this if it is satisfying as madam has mentioned find out what are the patents related to your project has already been taken then from those patent document you can go into the claim section from the claims you can read those claims and find out how is the difference what is the difference between those claims and your project objectives so uniqueness or uh, difference between already patented entity and your project you will understand and then you can decide that okay you can combine some additional thing you can have something else also added into your project and uh, you can go ahead with patenting so these kind of the activities can be done but if you are really interested in doing this innovation put your intellectual efforts put your own ideas develop your own ideas and work for those ideas working for ideas you need to undergo many trial and errors of course for all these carrying out trial errors uh, institute will be supporting you here you can do all those things in the laboratories you can uh talk to your guide you can talk to your hod about the laboratory facilities time equipment and all that so you can have many experimentations done see uh if something new is to be work out it is not something like in one go you had uh, tried it and in one go you got all the results many times you will find that yeah you have to do many trials and uh, remove the errors in every trial and next time you have to do the fresh trials so likewise many things you have to do what is important here in this case is your patience you should not lose your patience 
you know that yeah it will be sometimes feel very hard and difficult but unless you get proper expected result you should not stop it so keep doing all these things and uh, institute will be with you your guides hod's department will be with you and uh, let us expect that something good will come from this uh, group every project has been identified some innovative component so we uh, we have gathered here today that your project has got some innovative component madam also has mentioned into her presentation that these are the projects there are some projects with design aspect there are certain projects with implementation development aspect so which project can go for patent which project can go for uh, design all those things can be discussed and dealt and we can go ahead with that uh, formation of this opc or a private limited company or private limited with limited liability i prefer that uh, in the initial phase yeah you should better go for one person company the expenses for registration are also very small you should have your digital signature which if you decide you you should have registered a company the entire thing can be done within 8 days 3 days are required maximum 2 to 3 days are required to get your digital signature so you should have di your digital signature from the government office that is done online so you can get your digital signature and getting digital signature is required your uh, aadhar card one mobile number and one email id with this you can get your digital signature once you have digital signature then you can go ahead with company registration of any kind of the type that is opc or private limited uh, for private limited companies with private limited or private limited with limited liability there are certain legal aspects which you need to complete bound to complete every year uh maybe bit costly so better go for opc as you are in the initial stage beginning stage and want to do the activities want to claim for the subsidies and claim for loans also so opc registration is easy so 3 days for digital signature another 3 days for opc registration in 6 uh, days or 6 uh, working days or 10 days you can register the company so uh, that hassle is also not these days is not there earlier days registration of the companies you have to run between many offices get n number of nocs I, uh, all these things has been removed and now these days it is under single window and with online so those things are very easy now you have to focus on your work come with innovative ideas come with new kind of inventions as uh, this uh, madam has explained about the green zone rather these were the promoters they themselves were runner in half marathon and what they found is after running with the very brand new shoes with one marathon or second marathon they need to throw the shoes because the sole is perfectly fine but then the upper cover is getting deteriorated so what to do with this good sole so they started with this aspect and getting funds collected and then started donating these kind of the slippers to the uh, adivasi and other uh, students where it is difficult them to have the slippers so likewise a simple idea can be a patent same thing the girl from pune ankita the stepler pin kind of arrangement so all these things see uh, these are not kind of a great research is done for all these kind of the things is day to day activity they have observed and they come up with the different idea so you are doing a project work it hard find out the innovative component do the trial errors try to find out some alternative things okay you have some these features in your project <coughs> sorry <coughs> few things can be added and it becomes more innovative 
so uh, likewise things can be done uh, now what <clears throat> we are expecting from you people is you should come forward we have separate uh, cell for this uh, khatavkar sir will be working for this cell which uh, he will help you in uh, doing all these things but you should come forward so guides should come forward along with the students and work on these kind of the different projects which are more innovative uh, hoping soon to see you in the next cycle where you might have done some work and uh, your patent survey is done and you have already with uh, known differences between claims and your objectives so that we can further decide the further course of action so uh, work on these lines my best wishes for you institute will support you in this regard have interaction regular interaction with your guides and department so that we can work for the betterment of the country whatever is government is coming with coming up with the new policies like atmanirbhar bharat or make in india and all that you will get benefit of all those things yeah this is from my side still if you want to ask some questions the forum is open for discussion uh, you can ask the question or you can type the question in chat box you can type the question me individually or to madam individually or to your guide individually so that the guide or uh, any respective person can ask that question yeah khatavkar sir over to you yeah uh, just as you told sir the forum is open for the discussion still we have 10 minutes so i appeal all if you have any queries feel free to ask as i mentioned earlier even guides can initiate the discussion suggest uh, if the project coordinators of uh, different departments are present in this in discussion uh, that while going through i mean after going through the innovative aspects and how patentability can be found in the projects if uh, they feel like introducing few more projects which might have been missed um, in your departments so you can Uh, once again go through the list of uh, project titles and speak to the students and you can even involve like uh, is that right khatav uh, ka sir yeah yeah can we add yeah, yeah, we can add man another thing uh, we will ask to all project coordinators that uh, not only they revise the list but also they now bifurcate the projects as per the design and development aspects so that it will be more easy for us to guide the students I think we don't have any more questions. So. Ha! I think we should stop here. Stop here. Yeah, 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 sir. Cut out, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. Yeah. Conclude the session. Yeah. Uh, I will conclude with this. Uh, this is not the end. Neither this is the beginning of end. This is the only end of beginning. This is the first workshop we have taken, and now the series of this type of workshops and the culture of the innovation uh, will be there. with the help of you all so i thankful for professor sailib bidwi for accepting our invitation and being a resource person for this workshop as well i i thankful for 
Honorable Director Sir for providing a platform and guiding us and showing uh, so much interest in these activities as well as I thank all the students, project coordinators and the faculty members who has joined this particular workshop and I expect that this, is, uh, this workshop will be triggering for you and we will see uh, many more patents and startups at our institute. With this, uh, I declare we have we have completed this workshop and we will end over here. Thanks again for all. मैंने चाने जालो शब्द। अन्य पहिला दस इन हाउस फैकल्टी पुनीत्री आईटीआर के डेब्यू हो गया। अब तो लेकिन आने तीन चारों से पड़ते हैं। आप रहोगे तो लेकिन